Happy Halloween. Oh, Laura, you what? (laughs) 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 That's what you get. Yes, I was trying to give you special effects. It would have made it would have been just great if the, we didn't have no technical difficulties. I was trying to make it look like <laughs> I got a fog machine. Wink, wink. <laughs> Wait, let's talk about though the result of that. So, because I had to do it several times, I did it several times did just to what? get you to see it. The, my smoke. Oh. Did you see my smoke effect? Yeah. Okay, I did it. Look at me. I had to do it several times because I had to be prepared because I tested it out. At, no, I did it leisurely at first. And I was like, oh, this looks cool. It looks really Halloween-y. I'm going to do it when she log on. <laughs> so I did a practice round, right? And then I had to <laughs> hold it while you was logging on, but it took a little bit. So I did it again. And then I did it again when I was like, okay, you should hear me now. <laughs> and I had to do it again just now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> But we have to stay focused. Lord. We gotta stay focused. <laughs> Boo. Strangers. I'm Brit. And I'm D. And welcome to another the last of this year. Spooky episode. Uh, it's a strange world after all. What? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> oh, you was ready though. I appreciate the enthusiasm. I should have let you say yes. it anyway. It's like it's been forever. Oh, no, you got it. <laughs> I got it. This is the podcast where we discuss true crime cases, the supernatural, urban legends, conspiracy theories, and all of them things that keep the wild strange, the world. It could also kind of sound like wild, wild world, strange. It is the final week of, can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Okay. You just really chill. I think it's just because you bouncing around everywhere. <laughs> Maybe like a crackhead. Because <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> I'm trying to control my emotions. <laughs> it is the final week of spooky season. Our favorite time of the year. All month long, we have been dedicating all of our episodes to All Hollows Eve. And we will continue doing that but before we start i feel like i am deserving of three jokes because i didn't tell a single joke this month (laughs) okay (laughs) okay okay Uh, hold on (laughs) Uh, okay what is this thing on (laughs) Okay, I'm here. I'm focused. Okay, I'm telling the joke now. What do you call a cleaning skeleton? (laughs) (laughs) The Grim Sweeper. Sweeper. That's good. You better stop. What's the next one? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. Why did Dracula take cold medicine? You look like you want to answer. You got to answer. I don't, like I'm wanna... thinking. I don't know. <laughs> because he was coughing too much. <laughs> <laughs> he was coughing too much. Do you better just stop? That's a good you one. That one is a stop. good one. <laughs> Okay, hold on one more. I said three. I said three. I said three. Um, okay. What? <laughs> Wait, I said someone I wanted to tell. I'm going to tell it. You probably going to think it was that funny, but I thought it was funny. What did the ghost say when he, re- when he realized he'd been cheated? I've been bamboozled. <laughs> Wait, okay, one more. Wait, there's a, there's a 
last one. Why would you said ghost, three? <laughs> why wouldn't the ghost <laughs> dance at the party? He why? had nobody to dance with. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said that one instead of the that one was the before. one that I was that was the one that I was supposed to say, but I thought it was you switched That's it for the trying. other one. I didn't switch it. I couldn't oh. find the one that I was supposed to say. That's oh. why I said it anyway. I was like, oh wait, no, that wasn't the one that I picked. But anyway, <laughs> thank you for letting me tell my about comedy hours over. <laughs> you had a good two out of the four. No, so. no. Three? What? Three? You better stop. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a poll. Okay, Two. let me take a poll. Two. Go ahead. <laughs> Write a note. Take a poll on the <laughs> joke. In today's episode, we have a jam-packed Halloween-themed variety show. Oh, nothing. I thought you were going to make like a little. <laughs> oh. No, I had that little corny noise. I don't know if I was going to use that though. Oh, the first okay. variety show we did. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. We kick it off with a Halloween ritual to find one's true love. We dive into the doppelganger conspiracy theory with a real-life account of someone who believes they have encountered their doppelganger. We will discuss the origins of commercial haunted houses and a haunted hotel from our hometown. (laughs) There you go. That's what we was looking for. There we go. (laughs) I I am excited, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what. I think I truly feel like we might top last year's because I feel like last really? year's may have top. No, the f- I feel like no, 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 no. I take that back. I feel like the first season was better than last season, but I feel like this season might top for sure last season. Let me think about the first because the first one has, you know, a special place. Yeah. And I just listened to all of them. So because I was doing a little research. So look at you. Thank you. I'm responsible sometimes, but I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited, D. Me too. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's get into it. So, as I said, I did go back and I listened to every Halloween. Well, not every Halloween episode. I listened to some Halloween episodes. And I went back and listened to every Halloween variety episode. And in last season's episode, I mentioned halloween matchmaking so i did some research and this is what i found so halloween matchmaking dates as far back as the 18th century in ireland a party host would hide different trinkets along with a ring in a dish of i believe it's pronounced call cannon Call cannon is made up of mashed potatoes and cabbage. So almost like a shepherd's pie without the shepherd, without the meat part. I don't know what what makes a shepherd. <laughs> Never mind. Stay on top. <laughs> but anyway, yes. So they serve the dish to all of the men, women, whoever found the ring in their dish would be the next to be married. Similar to a mm. bride throwing her wedding bouquet. I was just like, I wondered, like, thinking that this made me think of how people put engagement rings and, like, desserts or food and things like that. I was thinking, like, I wonder if that's where that idea came from. That's a good question. Probably. But also how dangerous is it? But I guess they know that there's something in there, so they're not just, like, like, it's what if somebody's, like, (laughs) going to town on that, uh, Call cannon. <laughs> like this call cannon is good. <laughs> and he choked on like a ring, a trinket. Like okay. So various traditions would become more popular in the 19th and early 20th century. Some of those traditions were illustrated on postcards, which included instructions on how to complete the ritual. The most common ritual would involve seeking one's true love in a mirror, which I think I mentioned last season, but I didn't really know like the gist of it. So on Halloween at midnight, one would gaze into a mirror 
with a candle and supposedly your true love's face will appear just above your shoulder. Here is an example of one of the postcards. I put the website in the sources that I use and they had the different pictures of the postcards. It's really cool, but one of them read, <clears throat> and yes, I'm about to be. <laughs> Action. In the hour of midnight Halloween, your future husband may be seen. Before a mirror, you must stand with lighted candle in your hand then over your shoulder <laughs> let me get through will appear the face of the one to you most dear so that's you would you would hold the mirror hold the candle and you know say say the incantation with as much passion as i said it <laughs> <laughs> That's um, a little too much. It's a little it, creepy. Is it to do that? Yeah. Oh, I think it. I thought it was for me. I, I would just what you would just what because I was gonna say it just makes me think of Bloody Mary and Candyman. Oh. Even though you're not saying their names, but the whole mirror thing. And I think Bloody Mary. Some people do use a candle. Okay. Yeah. Oh no! Call me crazy. Call you know. I I don't know. Let's see. I feel like I would do it, but let's. There may be some other <laughs> options on here that. for you. For the single ladies, I might you know because I'm single <laughs> and ready to mingle. So, but there are other options we can give you. I forgot. So there's another postcard that they show. Their instruction specifically states that the mirror has to be new. It has to be clean and the mirror should be in your left hand. So it has to be a handheld mirror and the candle in your right at midnight that it has to be all of that at midnight. And I'm assuming midnight like the night before I get or like, you know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah. that's what I was like, do they mean like it's Halloween and then it turns midnight? No, that doesn't make sense, right? Because it has to be all midnight. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Okay, so a variation of this mirror ritual was described in the 1914 Halloween issue of the Evening Ledge. It's a Philadelphia newspaper, Philadelphia newspaper. It gave instructions to walk back i think this is what i was talking about because i think i was talking about walking backwards down the stairs or so i don't remember but i know right so this one gives instructions to walk backward outside in the moonlight with a handheld mirror and then for this one you would recite this incantation which i'm only telling you guys because y'all might want to try that i kind of want to try this but okay so you recite this incantation <clears throat> <laughs> round and round, O oh stars so fair, ye travel and search out everywhere. I pray you, sweet stars, now show me this night who my future husband or wife will be in scene. So that's what you would say. You say it like Dracula, <laughs> like you just did. <laughs> I mean, again, it's just about the passion, you know, it's just the passion behind it more than anything. Okay. More than anything. Um, see, that one you would do, would you do? Well, let me finish and then I'll ask you which one you would do. You have to pick, you going to pick one, would you rather? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm childish. Nut <laughs> also played a key role in the Halloween matchmaking rituals, pouring half a pint of brandy into a dish and lighting it on fire along with candied fruit and sugared almonds guests would then attempt to grab as many treats as possible directly from the flames the guests <laughs> these face i wish y'all could see her face <laughs> this was labeled the most dangerous of them to play i bet <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the way the way you win the game essentially is the guests with the most treats. They essentially won because they would meet their future spouse within a year's time of doing that. Another ritual involved hunting for chestnuts in a group. And the first to find 
one with a burr would be would be the first to marry. Scottish women were told to take hazelnuts, as many hazelnuts as they wanted for like possible matches that they had, romantic interests or whatever. And they would assign names to them or write their names on them. And then they would toss them into the fire. And so the hazelnut that burned to ash without popping or exploding revealed her true love. Apparently, because I don't know that we'd be doing that in modern days. So apparently you can make a sweet treat and you just use walnuts, hazelnut, nut, hazelnut. Hazelnut was what I was supposed to say. Hazelnut. <laughs> using walnuts hazelnuts try to say nut without putting so much emphasis on the uh (laughs) and (laughs) nut nutmeg it's hard for this texan i was like hazelnut nutmeg (laughs) walnut (laughs) that's because you was being childish now you can't get out of it but okay okay let me get through You mix walnuts, hazelnuts, nutmeg before going to sleep and you are supposed to, (laughs) you're supposed to dream of your future spouse. I was just thinking with this though, wouldn't you have to have already crossed paths with them? Well, I guess with the other one where you, oh yeah, in both, I guess you would have had to have crossed paths with them because you had to know their names in order to use it. Oh yeah, that one. But with the dream, because you know how they say in your dreams, you never, you can't make people up like you've seen them before, even if on the street. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, okay, so it would be somebody, you know, I guess. I mean, but uh, seen before. if you, if it's just somebody you saw on the street, you wouldn't remember them. But then if you saw them in your dream, I think you would be actively looking for that person. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so the last ritual is one, if I remember correctly, you mentioned it last year and it was involving the apple peels. Did I mention that? Or peeled fruit. Maybe it was leave. You said it was in Charmed because I remember when you said it. I was just about to say, was I talking about Charmed? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Because that's when when Phoebe saw Cole's name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this was a real ritual. So. A person would peel an apple and toss the peels over their shoulder. I don't think it matters like left or right, but the peels were supposed to spell the initials of their future spouse, much like the mirror game. Some instructions said this had to be done at midnight on Halloween. So that's the only thing I got, not like which shoulder, but just that it had to be done midnight on Halloween. So with that being said, that was Halloween matchmaking. If you had to choose, would you rather? Which one would you rather do? I'm going to go with the simplest one. And that is <laughs> and that is the apple peeling. You because peel I feel like the other one. Huh? You think peeling an apple? I say you think peeling an apple is simple? Yeah. That's funny. I'm not reaching into fire. And... <laughs> I'm not looking in the mirror because like when I think of like just looking in the mirror with like a candle or something, I do think of mirror gazing. Yes. And a lot of people who have done it say that they their faces turn like demonic. Oh, I wonder, though, if that was them expecting, you know what I mean? Like the power of suggestion. Oh, maybe. Like if I'm because going I mean, in with it's that a, intention. Yeah, because I remember it was a trend a while back. So maybe yeah, I people were going too. in with that intention. Yeah. Okay. So, but like that's what I think of seeking. when I think of. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the, the apple. Oh, okay, okay. I feel like this is the difference between a Virgo and a Leo because Virgo makes like practical, sensible decisions. I feel like Leo is like emotional or like I need, you know, like I need some some excitement, some dramatics. So <laughs> not quite as dramatic as putting your hand in fire. That's some Gemini, Aries type stuff. <laughs> but um, one of the mirror ones I think I would do, I think because I have been wanting to mirror gaze 
So, and it does remind me of mirror gazing. So I just think that would be a cool one to do. The second one that I might do is the, the nut mixture with the walnuts, hazelnuts, (laughs) and nutmeg, but I don't like hazelnuts. So I don't know. So maybe the mirror one is the one for me, but that is my contribution (laughs) to our variety show. And I almost went with a story about mirror gazing for this episode. That would have been cool. I know. We're not simpatico. But that was that was a good one. I never heard of of that before. Oh, just the concept in general? Yeah. Yeah, I had never I had never heard of it until last year when I was looking at something else and then saw this and I was like, no, I need to because look last year I waited to like the last minute. But on this one I was like (laughs) I mean, I did. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I did, and I was researching last night I'm while watching playing. Simpsons Treehouse. Of last Hulu. night. I last mean, the night, night before while watching the <laughs> Simpsons. <laughs> last year, I think it was like an hour before. Stop. I'm growing as a person. Okay, Y'all have to you, like, you, you know better. how they say it? Yeah, I was like, you know how to say meet people where they at? No, it was last year. I think it was like about an hour. Because I was like, oh, shit, what we doing today? <laughs> that is funny. Okay. So mine found a, I found a few doppelgangles. I said gangle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get for laughing at you. <laughs> I know. And you made me forget okay. what I was about to say because I was about to say something stupid. It was like the universe shutting both of us off because I knew it was going to annoy you. <laughs> and now I don't know because you said that. And I was oh, like, what? Man. Okay. <laughs> you got it. Doppelganger. Okay. So if you don't know, a doppelganger is a biologically unrelated lookalike or a double of a living person. Doppelgangers are often portrayed as a ghostly or paranormal phenomenon and usually seen as a harbinger of bad luck. Yeah. Because I don't think I've ever heard anything good about. Yeah. I was going to say I've seen them referred to as evil twins, too, is what I've seen. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was just about to say. Um, Oh, oh. (laughs) <laughs> ooh, I told you I didn't look at it. I'm sorry. Look, <laughs> that's how you know. And I, ooh. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um, other traditions and stories equate a doppelganger with an evil twin. According to English and German folklore, seeing your double three times could mean that death would soon follow. Quick question. Uh, how, mm-hmm. Quick question. How many times did you see yours? One. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I was just about okay. to say, thankfully, I only saw her once. And I think some like folklore, they you have to see each other. So they have to see you too. She didn't see me. Oh, so. okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I found this story from Reddit and it is from Redditor. Quiet Voice 4846. And this is her story. Late at night, I usually go to the bathroom multiple times, but for the past four days, every time I go to leave, I can see myself still standing in the mirror from the corner of my eye. What? I feel like that's happened to me before. I, I, was, yeah, <laughs> I was just about to say, now that I think though, about it. But it's been here, like, ever since I got here. I think it it happened at least twice to me here. But I think it anyway. happened to me once, but I was on shrooms, so I didn't know. I was like, mm. hmm. it was enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, it is like the other me is watching me leave the bathroom. It terrifies me to the point where I almost run out without looking directly at the mirror. I never yeah. told my husband about it. Yeah. <laughs> I never told my husband about it because I didn't want to acknowledge it out loud. Earlier today, I took a nap in our bed while he sat in the chair next to it watching TV. 
When I woke up, he told me that he had seen me sit up and Mm. crawl backwards to the edge of the bed and stand up in front of our bedroom door from from the corner of his eye. So, (laughs) sir. Girl, wait. And I got a mirror over here to my left (laughs) peripheral and I keep. I didn't even know I should have read this. I should have read this because I keep looking over there. I was not prepared. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the way you cover you <laughs> Whew, okay go oh man what if okay. this one of the times where we catch like a orb or something on camera be like Don't dang you that. got my ghost on <laughs> and i wasn't gonna say nothing but your voice is no. doing that you know how i keep saying how um, your voice be getting distorted and deep yeah <laughs> yeah that's how it is <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> Okay, he thought it was weird I got up like that because I'm in the last month of my pregnancy and I can't really move so well without it hurting. So he tried talking to me. When I didn't answer, he looked at the door to find me not there and still sleeping in bed. Mm -hmm. So that's another common thing too. I got really creeped out and I finally told him about what I've been seeing in the bathroom. He thought it was creepy as well, but didn't want to really talk about it anymore because he thinks it will give whatever it is power or energy. I have no idea what it wants or why we have both seen it. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. For her to be nine months pregnant and for her to get out the bed the way he said she did. It don't even make sense. Yeah. It don't even make sense to do it and not be pregnant. Yeah. (laughs) Because, like, why are you getting up like that? What what are you doing? (laughs) When you being extra, what are you doing? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I saw a lot of doppelganger stories, but that one creeped me out. So I was like, I got to put that one in here. It makes me think of us. Okay. I was going to say, it kind of also made me think insecure, but then that's not scary. That's just funny. <laughs> so, because she has a mirror. So, she has a mirror because y'all D don't watch Insecure. So, <laughs> <laughs> Issa D, you know, Issa Rae's character, she has a mirror Issa as well. It's the one, like, if you've ever seen advertisement, like, when she be rapping and stuff in the mirror, the mirror person, like, can, like, talk back to her. Oh, she got her own shit going on in mirror world. (laughs) That's what she told her. She was like, bitch, I got problems over here. (laughs) In one episode, but but no, that's yeah, it's still creepy. That's creepy. Yeah, that's good. That's a good story. (laughs) Again, I feel treated, not tricked. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. There was something else I was going to say about that. What? The way you said it. Something else is something else I was going to say. And you remember that Twilight Zone episode where she was at the bus station Mm -hmm. and she kept seeing herself? Mm Mm-hmm. And didn't she she get got? Yeah. I I believe the Dapel Gengia is how you actually (laughs) pronounce it. it. Took her life. But I was going to say, don't laugh at me. What was it called? What do we call Candyman? A tolem? Tulpa. Tulpa. What the hell? Okay, Tulpa. I was close. <laughs> I'm going to claim it. I was closer than I would be. <laughs> <laughs> so say it one more time. Tulpa. Tulpa. T-U-L-P-A. <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay. So a Tulpa. Okay, that's what it made me think of because, like, giving energy into it, which then made me think of Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. I recently just binged all of them because I realized I had never seen all of them. And I am now feeling like that might be my favorite slasher franchise right now for me. Because, you know, I'm like a Todd, like, no, I'm a kid. I would say I'm like a kid. A uh, horror film enthusiast like I like my comedy horrors I like the mainstream ones but I'm not like in it like you are yeah so for me I was like you know what I'm drinking the Freddy Krueger Kool-Aid we're gonna have to oh, do no. because 
Yeah, we are going to do a review because I feel like we're going to waste time. I feel like you don't like it. No, I was going to say that's between that and Child's Play. Those are my top two. Like franchises, those are like my top two. Oh, I forgot about Child's Play though. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to binge. But I will say now. Nightmare on Elm Street, they they was doing too much. Because <laughs> it was a, Sometimes, like man. a couple of them in the middle, huh? Yeah. Like yeah. the 90, the 90s one mm-hmm. when he like got stuck in a video game. You remember that? Yes. The high one, the stoner <laughs> one. I said, why they do the stoners like yes. this? <laughs> I was like that what? one. And then there was a bit of controversy. I can't even talk controversy with the second one with because the dude the main guy he was gay in real life and they were like making fun of him like in the movie kind of so it was because i remember when i first saw that and i was like half sleep and i heard screaming and i thought it was a woman and it was him and then that's what kind of made me look into it and i was like is he and he yeah because he did like interviews Ah. about it and stuff i think he did he pass away? Anyway, we got to get back into the to the thing. We do. We'll get. We'll, yeah. we'll do a review. Yeah. Moving on to my last, my last contribution, contribution of the night. I will be doing the origin of Halloween haunted houses or Halloween themed haunted houses. I was just, you know, scrooping and scrambling, ripping and running. And I was like, you know what? I saw this and I was like, I do want, I do want to know more because it was about <laughs> one haunted house. Then it was like, do you want to know more about the origin of haunted houses? And I was like, how did haunted houses get started? Because they've just kind of always been there for us. Yeah. So. All right. So Halloween was always seen as a, a, it was kind of almost like the purge for young, like teenage men or like men in like their early 20s. So it was a night for them to essentially blow off steam it was seen as a night or the only night in the year that boys could play different pranks without fear of punishment or getting in trouble so on halloween night young men could be found taking their neighbors gates off the hinges and stealing them playing ding dong ditch (laughs) We're gonna stick to that, <laughs> and <laughs> and stealing bodies, cause yes, cause these were probably the kind of people that were playing ding dong ditch, not the other one. If you know, mm. you know. Yeah. <laughs> and stealing bodies in Kentucky in 1879, it is recorded that around 200 boys stopped a train by laying a fake stuffed body on the railroad tracks as a prank. In 1900, a group of medical students enrolled at the University of Michigan stole, y'all, they took this, they took a headless corpse from the anatomy lab and staged it right at the building's front door. So you coming in, you coming to class, and right at the front you see a (laughs) decapitated corpse. (sighs) What kind of? It's too much. <laughs> it's the wild, wild west. It's the wild, Man. wild. West. Like, what is going on? Mm. During the Great Depression, these young men's antics became increasingly worse. I don't know what could be worse than stealing a body or a headless corpse, but let's see. So think, think Great Depression. Think like, think quarantine. We've lived through. Um. Well, no, that's not the same. Well, I was just thinking like the streets. Well, I was thinking like the streets are dead. Like they were just trying to find something to do. They were bored. Mm-hmm. In 1933, there were hundreds of cases now at this point of teenage boys flipping over cars, destroying telephone poles, and engaging in various acts of vandalism across America. People would refer to that year's holiday as Black Tuesday. Cities across the nation were basically desperate, desperate, <laughs> desperate, and and they, they had even considered banning Halloween altogether. But some other cities decided, hey, you know what, what if we organize some different Halloween activities to keep the youngins, the young folks, the young whippersnappers busy? 
they would ultimately host parties, have costume parades, and haunted houses to keep the kids from running amok. I feel like I know what your note is about to be. <laughs> say it. What is it? What is it? Don't look at it. Just say it. Just say amok, it. Amok, 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 amok. I was like, every time I see that word or hear it, it just makes me think of Hocus Pocus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's funny that's funny <laughs> I saw it highlighted I was like I already know <laughs> <laughs> okay so fast forward a little bit further to 1937 a party pamphlet advised individuals on just how to create their own trail of terror so hang old fur, strips of raw livers on the walls. Oh, okay. So yeah. So hanging strips of raw liver on the walls when it's dark, you would feel it while you walk. So it would give you kind of like that, like the heebie-jeebie. Uh. Have weird moans and howls coming from dark corners. Dampen sponges and hair nets hanging from the ceiling. So they hit people in the face and again, give you like that gross feeling. And then doorways are to be uh, blockaded so that guests must crawl through a long dark tunnel. So that was how they did that. So these haunted houses are them giving suggestions were for residential areas. So the early American haunted houses were small and they were not for profit. They were typically hosted again in residential areas. But in the decades to follow, larger organizations would host their own haunted houses as fundraisers or commercial attractions the most famous and influential one was disneyland's haunted mansion in 1969 there are now over 1200 commercial haunted attractions today there's a docuseries on disney plus called behind the attraction and haunted mansion is on there i watched it I don't know what I was doing one night. I think I was bored and I was about to watch. Like I watched the old Haunted Mansion. I was going to watch the new one. And I was like, wait, no, let me watch. Because we didn't get to go to Disney. So I ain't never seen it. So I was like, <laughs> well, let me watch the behind the attraction. I thought it was really good. And then I watched the new Haunted Mansion. I recommend that. So it was just basically to keep kids busy. <laughs> basically, because they were running them up. <laughs> They were terrorizing everybody. And they were like, you know what? We need something to keep these kids <laughs> occupied. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But isn't everything pretty much <laughs> to keep kids something occupied? Something to keep you occupied. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but I would have never even thought to look into why they were, you know, like the origin of it. Yeah. <laughs> so now... So you know what's a good movie about haunted houses? What? Houses October Built. Not the second one, the first one. I still have to watch that. I've heard people talk about that. I've heard you talk about that, but I still need to yeah, watch it. Yeah, me and it. Angelica had watched it one night. Yeah. And it was it was actually it was good. The second one, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, it's not as good as Houses October Built, but Hell House LLC is another one. It's one of those, it kind of gives Blair Witch almost. Mm -hmm. That's not even a good comparison because I didn't even like Blair Witch. But <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, well, I don't know because I didn't watch the watch it. You know, you never seen Blair Witch? Blair Witch Project, because there's Blair Witch Project, which is the original. Then there was Blair Witch. I've only ever seen like spoofs of it and some clips of it. I've never sat down and watched it. I mean, if you've never seen it, I will watch it. But I mean, it's not one of those where I'm just sit down and be like, oh, I want to watch Blair Witch Project. But that was that was a good story. Very informative. Oh, girl, it was mine. Thank you. <laughs> I had forgot that I was the last one to go. I'm sitting here, sitting here. I was still. <laughs> but I was about to say I was still stuck on your story. Like the girl. Okay. 
<laughs> I did a whole thing about the origin of haunted houses. So yes, that's so <laughs> really quick. Do you have a favorite haunted house that you or that you've been to or a haunted house that you can you know, remember? I haven't even been reason? to that many, but I did <laughs> like Reindeer Manor. The one we went uh, to. Okay. Yeah. Stop stealing my <laughs> stuff. <laughs> the one man you did was pretty good too. Which one? It was like had to do with dolls or something. Oh. Yeah, that was like, yeah. Long time ago. Okay. So I remember, of course, the Ripley's, believe it or not, theirs. Oh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it's like near and dear because I would remember being a kid and going in and be like, well, I'll visit my granny and then not visit my granny. That's not what I meant to say. But because <laughs> <laughs> she was living here, but like visit family. Sorry, was what I meant yeah. to say. And then, yeah. But um, the other one is Reindeer Manor. But because I feel like I've never been so scared in a haunted house. I don't know if you remember really quick that one haunted house that we went into. And I was like, I'm a lead. I can lead this time. I got it. I walked in and I stood still because we had to walk through that like dark thing where it was like a blow up thing. And you could feel that it on either the side. Doll. The ones with the dolls. That was that one. Okay. So there was like, yeah. you, it was you, me, Trish. Angelica and Shannon, right? No, that right was there, Reindeer we had a group of people. That was Reindeer Manor. Because when we did the doll, it was just me and you. No, the uh, Reindeer Manor, they had something like that. I'm going to tell you I how I remember. I think they did. I think they did. Okay. Because I remember yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to lead. And I remember walking in. <laughs> and because remember, we were in a line like this. And I stopped and Angelica said, Brittany. I said, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I said, I can't do this. I said, I feel like I'm in a cough. You don't remember because you couldn't see anything. You could just yeah. feel. And I said, I feel like I'm in a cough. And I said, I didn't even think it that I was It was like you were being squeezed. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, it, the reason why that one scene in um, uh, Nope was so impactful to me is because I said, I feel like we've had that feeling where you feel like you're going down a creature's esophagus because that's what it <laughs> felt like. <laughs> Like oh my, without the acid when you get down. Yeah, I had she had to get in front of me. You remember that we had to switch. I was like, I can't. I was like, I can't. (laughs) Child, I think we was hot too. It felt like it lasted forever. That's because it was more than one. (laughs) Oh my god. Yeah, I think it was like three. Wait, you talking about the haunted houses or the tunnels like that? No, the haunted houses like on the grounds. Yeah, yeah. I remember, see that, that's what I'm saying. Those, the other ones didn't bother me. It was just that one part of that house. Cause you know that it, it has a backstory. Like it's actually, that land is actually haunted. Yeah. Last the story land. I have. The last the, story. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard of the Adolphus Hotel? I think so. Let me look this up. I'm a, I just want to see a picture of it, but it sounds so yes, familiar. Downtown. Yeah. Okay. Well, the story's behind this. Sorry, I knew that the hotel was... Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Because I was always... I've always wanted to stay there, even before I knew it was haunted, because I was like, mm-hmm. it's just so fancy. It is fancy. The Adolphus Hotel is an upscale hotel located in the Main Street District of downtown Dallas. The Adolphus was opened on October 5th, 1912, and was built by the founder of the Anheuser-Busch Company, Adolphus Busch. So the beer. Yeah. Mm. Um, According to reports, countless people have fallen down the elevator shaft and into the basement below or have been crushed to death by the passing elevator car. So you have to think of how the elevators were back then, how they didn't have doors, basically. (laughs) Ah. Yeah, think of old-timey elevators. Two weeks after the Adolphus opened, a waiter turned to say something to his friend as he stepped on the elevator. He didn't notice that the elevator car had already gone up, He Mm -hmm. fell three floors, crushing his skull on impact, and he died two hours later. Yeah. I feel so so bad, but at the same... Never mind. 
That's terrible. Yeah, because I'm like, they even if you're not paying attention, like there were no doors, so you would just be. Why, yeah. why wouldn't you be paying attention though? That's what I was gonna say. I'm not blaming this man. I'm just thinking how it was a conversation where you know it ain't no damn doors yeah. on the elevator, yet you just feel <laughs> confident enough to walk and talk and not look at the elevator. And then what's his I friend mean, doing? His friend probably didn't even like his friend probably was like, I wish he would <laughs> shut the fuck. Because <laughs> I think probably it like, was a friend, but also a co-worker. So that's probably true. <laughs> co-worker was probably like, ooh, that elevator moving. I ain't going to say shit. That's I'm tired up. of him. All he do is snitch. That is messed up. <laughs> I'm sorry to the fan. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. <laughs> oh, man. So looking into this, there were so many elevator deaths like so Ooh, many and i could i was like i can't even put them all in here so in, at what point at what point was it like okay we need something we need to do something we need a cage or a door or something <sighs> you know how rich people are not my problem that's crazy until they get that's sued it. that's what i was thinking how could nobody yeah. sue but okay so Guests riding the elevator late at night have reported seeing the mangled ghosts of former hotel employees standing beside them. So whenever I get back to Dallas, we should stay there and we should just ride the elevators at night. <laughs> yes. We can do a live. Wait, we uh, we need some money first because <laughs> one We're gonna night, have money. We gonna have okay. Okay. You're supposed to be working on incantations and manifestations oh, yeah, and true, information, true, so I can't even talk. I gotta, <laughs> gotta learn how to say it. <laughs> okay. The most infamous ghost to haunt the Adolphus is that of a young bride-to-be who arrived in Dallas in 1935. The wedding was held in the ballroom on the 19th floor. However, the groom was nowhere to be found. Heartbroken and humiliated, the bride fled the scene. Hours later, her body was found hanging just a few feet above the altar where she was set to take her vows. Ever since that night, guests staying on the 19th floor have reported hearing a woman crying, footsteps running up and down the hall, and even the sound of a rope creaking under the strain of a body. The bride Ooh. spirit has been spotted wandering the halls after events still wearing her wedding dress. So that's the main story. That's cool. I mean, <laughs> let me not say cool. That is interesting. I know what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, no, I'm sorry. If this, if those spirits really do linger, it is pretty cool. And it makes me, even though it wasn't a hotel like the elevator stuff reminds me of mm -hmm. 13 ghosts. You remember? Ooh, I was going to watch that. Scene? Yeah. Yeah. What What was? Explain the scene. Where he was in the elevator and he was split well, in half. For our, I was thinking for our listeners, kind of, because sometimes oh. we'll say stuff and I'll be like, we didn't even actually explain it. Oh, yeah. We do that a lot. Well, I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yes i think i remember <laughs> yeah you don't have no problem explaining nothing <laughs> you over explain i'm verbose <laughs> um but okay yeah i do kind of i do kind of remember that scene. yeah but no the yeah the whole elevator thing when i say there it happened a lot it happened a lot and now that you say it, I wonder how long it took them to get doors or whatever for the elevator. Because yeah. Because that's ridiculous. Even if just in life in general, like where we, I'm going to look into, we should look into that. Because like, yeah, how many elevator desks were there before they had the doors? And then who had the doors first? Like were these mm -hmm. state requirements? Like how did that all come into play? I would yeah. be curious to know how many elevator desks are then yeah because i mean we figured out the um was it not the emergency exit because when we did the rhythm club how they had yeah like, yeah and occupancy too what was it yeah occupancy it was and i think uh, emergency the, way, the exit. fire exit yeah yeah the emergency exits yeah, yeah. in like fire codes and things like that yeah, yeah. okay that's good anything else 
if I could remember, because there was one other, but it was an elevator thing. I think it was, it was a guest that fell. And then they were like falling from like, how many floors? Because they have at least 19 floors because that's where the ballroom is. So they they were falling from like high up. That's And then there was one where he fell and he landed on top of the elevator thing and they had to hurry up and get him out before the elevator went back up went back up oh my god yeah so yeah they were just out here reckless oh no because even if there was like an elevator because you know back then they had people on the elevators like an elevator attendant or Mm -hmm. something but even then Mm -hmm. still no door so and they would have been prepared you know they're just sitting in their little stool you know ready to press the button they're not talking while walking and <laughs> looking away stepping on the elevator <laughs> rest rest his soul but yeah the um the hotel though is like nice it is nice it is nice it's a luxury hotel i yeah. believe it's like a four or five star so yeah, if you're ever in the dallas area check it out i think we we did good I think we have some good stories. Yes, not bad for a couple of dum dums. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are we gonna top that? <laughs> how are Next we gonna... here? <laughs> Stay tuned, folks, because that is all, folks. Please follow us on Instagram at It's a Strange World Podcast. Twitter at Pod Strange World and on Facebook and TikTok at It's a Strange World After All. Also, if you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and like the show, please go ahead and give us a five star rating. And if you're feeling extra strange, please write a review. Please and thank you. Yes, we would love to hear from you. What did you think of this week's episode? Also, if there's anything else in the world of strange or true crime cases that you would like us to cover, let us know. If you have any personal stories involving true crime or the supernatural, we would love to have you on the show and share them with our listeners. We are doing movie reviews of the horror, thriller, slasher, and true crime genre. So if you have any movies or documentaries and want to hear our uncensored, unsolicited opinions on them, you can email those submissions to it's a strange world after all at gmail.com or DM us at any other social media platforms. D mentioned, even if you just want to say, hey there, we'll be here. Thank you for tuning into another episode of It's a Strange World After All. And thank you as always for keeping it strange with us. <laughs> Oh my god. Thank you. It's so Bye. Hard <laughs> to say goodbye. Oh, to the month of October. <laughs> On next season you're gonna sing it with me. Everybody gonna be like, what she's saying? <laughs> <laughs>